Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for this morning is the gospel reading from Matthew chapter 20. It's Jesus' parable about the laborers in the vineyard. Now, the message of this parable is simple yet profound. God treats all who are laborers in the kingdom of heaven the same. See, because of God's grace, there is no distinction on the last day. This is the simple message of Jesus' parable concerning the laborers in the vineyard. However, this simple message is also quite profound because God's grace can affect people in one of two ways. So there is both a positive and a negative aspect to this parable's message of equality in the kingdom of heaven. One of those aspects which we hear in this parable is words reiterating Scripture's greatest promise. Salvation is by grace alone. The other aspect which we hear about at the same time is words reiterating Scripture's greatest warning. How the pride of those who begrudge the Lord's generosity can lead to eternal separation from Jesus. This parable can be seen in light of either one of these two realities. And so let's first look at the application of this negative aspect of the parable's message, which can be seen through the laborers who were hired first. Now these men, as far as we can tell, are honest and fair men. They're not afraid to work hard and break a sweat so that they can provide for themselves and their family. These men are the epitome of virtue and dedication. And so early in the morning, even before the sun would rise, these men would get out of bed and get ready to begin work at sunrise. They were at the marketplace by 6 a.m. so that they could be hired by any one of the vineyard owners who was in need of laborers for his vineyard that day. This day was really no different from any other except that the man who came to hire them this time was one that they did not know. Now, the negotiations over pay were really nothing more than a formality. Everyone at that time, knows the unspoken law. The wage is one denarius for a full 12 hours of work. And so the agreement was made, one denarius for a full day's work. So the laborers quickly got to work out in the vineyard, but after a few hours of work, their attention began to shift. Rather than being single-mindedly focused on their work, they started to notice something a bit strange. More workers were showing up. These men hadn't been there from the beginning. They had missed the first several hours of the workday, yet here they were showing up to work. Maybe it was their laziness which prevented them from arriving at the marketplace in time to be hired at the beginning of the workday. Or maybe they just weren't proactive enough to get noticed by any of the vineyard owners. But either way, it was good to have the security of a full day's work and wage, unlike those men. As the hours went on, more and more men began showing up. What a strange vineyard owner this must be to keep going out to hire more men to work after clearly the best and hardest workers had already been hired long ago. As the sun drew nearer to the horizon, even more workers showed up. Why even bother at this point? They were hardly going to get paid anything for only an hour's work. But finally, sundown arrived and it was time to get paid. 
The workers were ready to collect their pay and go home for the night. But strangely, this lord of the vineyard called those who had worked only an hour to receive their pay first. And amazingly, he gave them a full denarius. What in the world is wrong with this vineyard owner? Why would you pay someone who only worked one hour a full day's wage? If he's going to do that, he better have something more in store for those of us who worked all day. Now, when the time came for those who had worked all day to receive their pay, lo and behold, they also received a denarius. They had slaved away in the hot sun for 12 hours for this man. And the way that he thanked them was to pay them the same as he paid those who had only worked one hour. What an outrage! And so when the vineyard owner said to these men, take what belongs to you and go, they were more than happy to leave this outrageous vineyard and find a more fair place of employment the next day. Now, as we reflect on the experience of these laborers who were hired first, we see how pride and a begrudging attitude can completely take over a person. We see how an attitude of self-entitlement and reliance on the law can lead to entirely missing out on the benefits of grace. In this parable, we see a warning of what can happen to someone who allows this attitude to overwhelm them. As Jesus says in the introduction to this parable, this is a parable which teaches us what the kingdom of heaven is like. It's like a man who is a master of a house looking for laborers to work in his vineyard. If this is what the kingdom of heaven is like, then to be in the kingdom of heaven means to work in Jesus' vineyard. This understanding of the parable puts an extremely serious meaning on the words of the vineyard owner in verse 14 of our text when he says, Take what belongs to you, and go. I can hardly imagine more terrifying words to hear from the mouth of Jesus than take what belongs to you and go. But on the last day when Jesus returns to judge the living and the dead, these are words that he will speak to those who have rejected his grace in favor of what they think is fair and right. My friends, we are constantly bombarded with temptations to think this way. The world teaches us to focus on what we deserve and what we think is fair and right. The world teaches us that when we are treated unfairly or when someone that we care about is wronged, we need to avenge that wrong. We need to be warriors of justice and defenders of righteousness because no one else is as qualified as I am to serve in that role. Now, don't get me wrong, there certainly is a place to defend righteousness and justice, but before the throne of God is no such place. We should never stand before our Lord and tell Him what is right and wrong and how He should police His world. It is not our place to tell God how he ought to act. God is God. You are not. So this parable teaches us, first of all, that if we let our pride cause us to begrudge the Lord's generosity, it can very quickly lead us down the path that leads to eternal separation from Jesus. May our Lord prevent us by his grace from going down this dangerous path. 
Now, the second aspect of this parable's message of equality in the kingdom of heaven teaches us how to avoid this dangerous path. We see the application of this positive aspect of the parable's message through the laborers who were hired at the 11th hour. Now, Jesus doesn't give us many details about the kind of men that these workers were, except in the brief exchange between the vineyard owner and these men while they were still in the marketplace. The vineyard owner asks them, Why do you stand here idle all day? Now, that word idle has a negative connotation in the Greek and is often used to describe someone who is lazy. So whether these men were truly lazy or whether they actually had some legitimate reason for being there in the marketplace standing idle, we don't know. The point is, these men were glad to receive the offer of the vineyard owner to go and work in the vineyard. But notice what he says to them at the end of verse 7. He says, you go into the vineyard too. Notice how there is no promise of compensation for these men. For the men hired at dawn, the promise of compensation was a denarius. For those hired in the middle of the day, the vineyard owner told them, whatever is right, I will give you. Yet these men hired at the 11th hour had no promise of compensation of any kind. And still... They went to work in the vineyard, even if only for an hour. Those hired at dawn trusted in the lawful agreement that they had made regarding their pay. Those hired in the middle of the day trusted in the promise of the vineyard owner's words that he would pay them whatever is right. Those hired at the end of the day had nothing to place their trust in except the inherent goodness of the Lord of the vineyard. And so because of their work, and more to the point, because of their trust, they were rewarded with more than a full day's pay after only an hour of work. What I mean is this. Yes, they were given a denarius, a full day's wage, but these men were also rewarded with the implicit invitation to remain in the vineyard. See, those who begrudged the generosity of the vineyard owner were sent away. Those who trusted in the man's grace alone and gladly accepted his generosity received even more than those hired first. As we reflect on the experience of these laborers who were hired at the 11th hour, we see the greatest promise of Scripture being illustrated. Salvation is by grace alone. We also see how an attitude of humility and a reliance on the gospel leads to reception of the Lord's grace in full measure. In this parable, we also see the ideal posture of a Christian. That is, humble trust in the inherent goodness of Jesus. My friends, you and I are like these men hired at the 11th hour. We are people who have been invited into the kingdom of heaven, not because of our own goodness, but because of the goodness of Christ. Just like in the parable... Christ seeks us out and finds us wherever we are in order to bring us into his kingdom. He doesn't just stand there with an open invitation waiting for us to make the move. Although the invitation certainly is open to anyone, the way that Christ works is that he personally seeks out and finds each one of us so that he can offer to us grace in his own way. He finds some of us at the font when we're too young to remember it. He finds some of us later in life after a few years of wandering. He finds others at the 11th hour shortly before our time on this earth has expired. 
But regardless of where Jesus has found you, the gift of eternal life in his kingdom is the same. And it comes to you freely, by grace alone. Now, my friends, as we go through this life, it is important to remember who we are. As I said a moment ago, we are those laborers hired at the 11th hour. We don't deserve anything that we have. It has all been given to us by grace alone. But as this parable also illustrates, we have been given work to do in the kingdom of heaven. Whether it's work as a father, a mother, a son, or a daughter. Whether it's work as a student, an employee, a homemaker, whatever the vocation might be, we all have been given work to do in the kingdom of heaven. The problem is, it's so easy to become like these men who were hired at the beginning of the day. It's so easy to lose focus on what we have been given to do. It's easy to allow our focus to shift from what Christ has given us and to focus on what he has given others. The problem is when we start focusing on what others have been given, we begin to make comparisons and judgments about what we think is fair. But in the kingdom of heaven, our standard of fair doesn't matter. In the kingdom of heaven, the last will be first, and the first last. There is no greater example of this great reversal than when our Lord Jesus, who is first in the kingdom of heaven, chose to reverse what is right and fair by taking on the punishment that we deserve. He became last in the kingdom of heaven, going to the cross, so that you and I might become first in the kingdom of heaven by grace alone. May our Lord Jesus Grant each one of us grace to live our lives in this kingdom in humility and contentment as we rely on his grace alone. In the name of Jesus, amen.